Now, when our assumptions and conditions are met, we have this thing called a sampling distribution model for proportion. And what's important to recognize is that a proportion, the proportion, is no longer just a computation, right? Uh, it's a random variable. It's a random variable quantity that has a probability distribution. In fact, it's the same way that we dealt with it with the binomial models that we did um, in chapter 17. Uh, with those binomial models, we were able to look at a, a distribution, and with a large enough sample size, we could uh, approximate it with a normal model. And again, we call this the sampling distribution model for proportions. And even though we depend on these distributions, they're incredibly important, we never actually see what the actual distribution is. We, we very rarely actually calculate these things. Um, we don't take the repeated, repeated samples, um, we simulate it. So we're not actually going out and repeatedly gathering the samples over and over again, partially because it would be a very expensive process, uh, but we simulate them with the computer based on uh, the parameters of that particular model. Uh, so, very important because they bridge the gap from real, the real world of data to the imaginary world of statistics. Um, it allows us to uh, look at a model of something. And um, it allows us, because we now have this uh, statistical model, it allows us to say something about that population when all we have is data from the real world. So all said and done, provided that the sampled values are independent and the sample size is large enough, uh, our assumptions and conditions are met. The sampling distribution of p hat, that is our uh, our sample proportion, right? p hat is our sample proportion. Uh, we can model it with a normal model where the mean is the same as our proportion and the standard deviation is the same as uh, that standard deviation we spoke earlier, the square root of p, p times q over n. Um, we can also, by the way, instead of saying PQ, we can call this P times 1 minus P. That way we don't have to remember what the Q is, where P is the proportion and M is the sample size. So let's look at an example. Here we have um, our situation. Of all cars on the interstate, 80% are speeding. Let's use the 68, 95, 99, 6.7 rule to show the proportion of cars we can expect to be speeding out of a random sample of 50 cars. Now, this thing that I underlined here is a very important key phrase. When we say that there's a random sample of this many cars, that's kind of a key word that we're talking about a sampling distribution. Uh, and that is your key to start to build this uh, to build this model using the mean uh, equal to p and the standard deviation of that uh, that p hat, where being that p times one minus p all over n, right? That's our this this when we read something like this that says a random sample of 50 cars um, in this kind of context, we know we're supposed to use a sampling distribution to represent it. So, uh, think, uh, think, show, tell, right? We want to find the distribution of the proportion of the next 50 cars if 80% of them are speeding. Okay, that's what we're looking to find here. Uh, we need to ask ourselves, can we use the normal model? Do our assumptions and conditions match? So we have to ask ourselves, uh, is this the 10% condition? Is it safe to assume safe to assume that 50 is less than 10% of the population of cars? And the population here we're talking about is all cars on the road. So is it less than 10%? Um, absolutely it is, right? So that one checks off. Um, does it satisfy the pass-fail condition? If I take 50 cars, um, times, so that's my n, times 0.8 is my, for my p, is that greater than 10? Uh, so 50 times 0.8 gives me 40. So that's definitely going to work. 
And does the flip of that work, times 0.2, is that greater than 10? And as it turns out, it, we should say greater than or equal to, that's 10. So this sample size is just barely big enough, right? So it will work. Um, and then something that apparently we forgot on this one is, is this a random sample? Uh, and yes, it is a random sample. The question stem does tell us that it's a random sample. So it does work out. Okay. So let's make the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Um, did I say, did I draw it on here? So there's my mean. It's the standard deviation is 0 0.057. And again, we got that by using our formula to find the standard deviation. We're going to take the square root of P times 0.8 times 0.2 over the sample size of 50 cars, and that's 0 0.057. So our normal model, I can't remember if I drew it. No, I did not. Uh, so our normal model is going to have a mean at 0.8, uh, because that is the same as our sample proportion. And then we're going to add 0 0.057 to get our uh, uh, to get our standard deviations, so that's 0.857, and we add it again. We get 0.914. And we add it again. We get 0.971, and then we're going to go the opposite direction. This time, subtracting 0 0.057, uh, so we get 0.743, and we subtract it again. And we get 0.686, and we subtract it again, and we get 0.629. So there's our 68, 99, 95, 99.7 rule. Um, again, remember, 68% within one standard deviation, 95% within two standard deviations, and 99.7% between three standard deviations. And finally here, we're just, uh, we're just reporting it out. We can expect 68% to be between 0.743 and 0.857, the 95 between 686 and 914, and the 99.7 between 0.629 and 0.971. So that's what we can expect. Out of 50 cars, uh, if we randomly sample 50 cars, we would expect 68% of those samples taken would have would be between 0.747 and 0.857. We would expect 95% of the samples taken to be between the 0.686 and 0.914. And 99.7% of the samples taken is 0.629 and 0.971. Remember, that's what a sampling distribution is telling us. It's telling us uh, the number of samples that are going to fall within that, um, within these, uh, these values. Let's do one more example here. Uh, this time about BMI. So, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report that 22% of 18-year-old women in the United States have a body mass index of 25 or more. Uh, a value considered by the National Heart and Lung and Blood Institute to be associated with increased health risks. As part of a routine health check at a large college, the physical education department usually requires students to come in to be measured and weighed. This year, the department decided to try out a self-report system. It asked 200 randomly selected female students to report their heights and weights, from which their BMIs could be calculated. Only 31 of these uh, 200 students had BMIs greater than 250. So the question is, is this proportion of high BMI students unusually small? So we need to ask ourselves, if we got 31 out of 200 students reporting that, and, uh, and uh, the tw it's 22%, is the proposed amount that it's that it normally is like that's what um, that's what the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report that that many women uh, are that high. Is this an unusually small proportion to get? Okay. 
So what we want to do is kind of find that probability. Make a sampling distribution and say, if I had a sample of 200 people, what's the probability that I get this proportion? So there's a summary of the information. 22% is what it's supposed to be. Uh, when they did their sample, it was 31 out of 200. So let's see if we can use a normal model to uh, approximate this. So I'll check our conditions. Uh, was this randomized? And we can say yes to that. The question stem states it was a random sample. A random sample. They did say that in the question. Uh, let's see, where did they say it in the question? We'll back it up for a second. Uh, right here, randomly selected female students. It was randomly selected. Okay. Uh, are these independent? Is it uh, is it reasonable to say that uh, one is not affecting the other? And I would say yes. It is reasonable to assume that the randomly selected students. Uh, that randomly selected students are not influencing each other. Do not influence. Sometimes I feel like when I write, I should be talking at the same time, and that there's just awkward silence. Influence. Uh, do 200 females represent less than 10% of the population? Yes. Safe to assume that there are more than 2,000 females. Two thousand females, and then finally. Does this pass the success, success failure condition? Um, and I would say we've got 31 out of 200. We have 31. Um, if you take the 31 out of 200, you've got 31 observations. That's greater than 10. And that means that you've got 169 observations, and that's greater than 10. So yes, right? That's going to check out because they're both greater, they're both greater than 10. So yes, the normal model is okay here. Uh, so let's go into constructing and finding a z-score. We can find a z-score to, to use our normal uh, CDF command to find the probability. Remember the z-score formula is uh, data minus mean. So data minus mean over standard deviation. And so our data here the, was the observed amount. 31 over 200, or in this case, 0. 0.55. We have 0. Uh, 0.155 minus the, excuse me, uh, minus the uh, su summary amount, right? The amount that says that we're supposed to have, so the, the mean, we'll call that 0. 0.22. And our standard deviation um, is 0. 0.029. And again, that 0. 0.029 comes from the square roots of p times 1 minus p all over n. Uh, so 0.22 minus uh, 0.78 all over 200. Square root of that gives us 0 0.029. Uh, so all said and done, our z-score is... Do I not write it down here? Of course I didn't write it down there. Why would I do something silly like that? Uh, write everything else down on so all said and done, we've got to calculate that 0. 0.155 minus 0. 0.22 divided by 0. 0.029 gives us a z-score of two, negative 2.24. And we can actually answer the question now, is this an unusually small amount? Yes, it is. This is more than two standard deviations away from the mean. That is definitely an unusual amount. Uh, we could also take this to the next level and uh, find the actual probability of that happening. And that's just the same that we did it in our chapter 17. 
we use normal CDF. Uh, we use a small number for the uh, lower bound. And we do our upper bound there. Uh, and, and when we do that, we get negative 10, negative 2.24, that's that. And that would be uh, a 0 0.0125, so uh, a 1.25% chance. So if we were to randomly sample 200 women, 218 year old women, uh, there's a 1.25% chance that we would get this proportion of 0.155. It's a pretty low chance. All right, that's what we've got for today. Uh, we will have a uh, another video that will show uh, the same thing with mean, but we will have uh, some practice in between that. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.